What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real football fans stand up, and you're now tuned in to CFO Sports. So if you're new, do us a huge favor. Comment, like, subscribe somewhere down there, and be sure to turn that notification bell to stay updated with all NFL news and content. Well, yo, we got to talk real quick, and I've been getting some flack online. And for those who follow the channel for quite some time, y'all know I'm not much of a Kool-Aid drinker. I'm not much of a kumbaya, roses, everything is great, there's no problems. That's just not this channel. So I want to headline with this. If that is what you are looking for, this might not be the channel for you. CFO, contextual football opinion. We speak with context, just not out of pure fandom, right? That's why I made the whole brand switch because I didn't want to be compromised. And if you follow me for quite some time since I started this, I never wanted to be compromised and I refuse to do so at this stage in my career. Now, as a football fan, as a Dallas Cowboys fan, you can be compromised. It might not be from the organization, but it might be from the fan base, right? And what does that sound like? Turning on your blinders and ignoring all intellect and knowledge and education when it comes to making a sound decision and speaking truthfully to your fan base. For those of you watching me right now on this channel, I first and foremost want to say I appreciate it, but I owe you a responsibility not to give you cookie cutter sugar opinions. I won't do that to you guys. Before I ever start doing that to you guys, I'll quit, I'll unplug the mics, I'll go do something else, I'll go play video games. You guys come to me because I speak the truth. But what's happening right now? There's a lot of people online who just feel like the Cowboys cannot do any wrong. Now, does that make sense to you? Now, we set back, we saw how free agency went, didn't go well. We saw what happened with Randy Gregory. We saw players start to voice their opinions, right? So even in-house, there's players within the organization saying, this team, this front office has some things that they need to fix. And, you know, when it comes to this NFL draft class, I feel like it's going to be a slow play. I don't see instant impact besides one to two players for the 2022 season. And that's my focus. I want to win this year. I don't care about 2023. I don't care about 2024. What does these picks and these free agent additions do for this team this year, right? We're, we're on the clock right now. We're in May, May 4th. May the 4th be with you, right? So that's where my focus is. And I know a lot of people are le looking futuristic down the road. I don't have that Stephen Jones approach, right? I'm ready to win now. We're tired. We're exhausted. I know we all are. It's okay to admit that. But what's also okay to admit, Cowboys fam, that other teams in our division and around the NFL did well in the draft. It's no knock. It, it's no knock on the Dallas Cowboys if I say the Philadelphia Eagles had a good draft. They did. There's no way we can lie. I can sit here and say, no, Kobe Dean was a horrible pick. They reached. I can sit here and say Jordan Davis was a horrible pick. They shouldn't have made that pick. But you know what these Eagles fans can do? They can pull up all our late night mocks. They can pull up all our draft videos and say, Tuck, you are a fraud and you're a liar. And rightfully so. Just like when we drafted CeeDee Lamb in 2020 and a lot of those Eagles content creators were like, oh, we never wanted a CD anyway. They were hurt because they got Jalen Rager, not CD, not Justin Jefferson. So just keep it real. Our Dallas Cowboys team will be able to compete with anybody this season. Trust me on that. As long as Dak Prescott is standing, we will be okay. But what I am not going to do is be that compromise fandom channel just giving you sugar content because I feel like that's what the fan base wants to hear. It's never going to happen. So I was asked the question, Tuck, do you think that the Dallas Cowboys did enough, right? And I would personally say no. I don't think they did enough this offseason at all to not just be a contender. They will be competitive. If you look at the schedule and you see how it drops on May 12th coming soon, the Cowboys should be in the thick of things. Like I said, if you put Dak Prescott and myself out there, 
we're gonna get you seven to eight wins, right? I just thought the Cowboys can do that just being half, you know what I'm saying? But did the Cowboys do enough to push themselves to being a championship caliber team? I have to say no. Unfollow, unfollow, they unfollow, they unfollow, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone, they're going to the other channel saying the Cowboys are winning the Super Bowl. That's not what we do here. I feel like the Dallas Cowboys in free agency to start off didn't do enough. I feel like in the draft, they didn't do enough to really push us to be a champion dip contender. So I asked this question, is winning the NFC East, is that deemed a great achievement? Because here's what I want to say. There hasn't been an NFC East winner to go back to back since 2004. So if the Cowboys were to win back to back, that's a feat that hasn't been done in a long time, which I think will be a huge stepping stone for this team and something you should definitely take your hats off and salute Mike McCarthy. No, Tuck, no, Tuck, that ain't it. That's not going to cut an NFC East championship. That's the bare minimum. That's not what we're aiming for. All right. So when we talk about this team and this roster, does it feel like to you, and I'm asking y'all, tell me if I'm wrong, does this team feel like this is that team? This is going to be that championship team. Does this roster right now, as it currently stands, feel like it's better than what we had last year going into the season? We lost Connor Williams. I know he had a lot of hold, but he was a veteran left guard. We lost Leo Collins. I know he had some issues, but he was a veteran at right tackle. We lost Randy Gregory, even though it was just one season that he fully played for the first time. We lost his impact, right? We lost Keanu O'Neill. We lost DeMonte Casey and some other pieces. Do you feel like we really excelled and added players that were much better than what we currently have? Just question mark. Just unknown. Because I took out the offensive line. I feel like the offensive line, just from a depth perspective, should be better because we have a lot more pieces if something was to happen. Now, here is something that you have to consider, Cowboys Nation, when it comes to the offensive line. You drafted Tyler Smith, who I think is going to be a phenomenal talent as he grows. I mean, the kid can just barely start drinking a few days ago, right? As he progresses and grows throughout his NFL career. There's probably going to be a lot of bumps in the road earlier on, which is why I was preaching patience. But let's say, for instance, you plug Tyler Smith at your left guard and Tyron Smith does what he does. Then what do you do? Do you go to Josh Ball, who's unproven? Do you go with Matt Walesko, who's unproven? So you could have a situation where your starting left tackle is unproven, your starting left guard is unproven, your center is still wavering, you have Zach Martin, and you have Terrence Steele in his first full season. That's a situation that can happen, right? But I feel like we do have depth. Now let's go to the defensive side of the ball. And here's what I'm going to say. When it comes to the Sam Williams pick, I know I gave it a C minus. Let's be clear. Sam Williams, as I broke the film down way before he was even drafted him as a Dallas Cowboy, definitely check that out. He has the talent. He has the size. He has the physicality. My mindset was just, I'm just exhausted with the players that have this baggage and we're able to turn a blind eye to these things, but not these things. Right. That's just my frustration. So it's really not a knock on Sam. It's more in the organization of what they will and will not tolerate, which is a whole nother video for a whole nother day. Right. But do you feel like our defensive ends with Dorrance Armstrong, Pharrell Basham, and now Sam Williams, that we drastically improve in that position? I don't know. I don't know. It remains to be unseen. Now, defensive tackle, I feel like our defensive tackle in our interior has gotten a lot of better. John Ridgeway, I feel like he's going to be a star. I feel like if there's anyone out of this class that has the opportunity to be a star, it's going to be Ridgeway. I feel like a lot of Cowboys fans are going to like him. He's tough. He's mean. He's nasty. He can go and do all the dirty work. Players and teams, they're, they're going to like him, right? So Ridgeway, you add him in there, right? But linebacker core... There's some uncertainty right there. I know we speak highly of Damone Clark. Will he be a red shirt? More than likely so. So you're running out there with maybe a healthy Cox coming off the ACL. You have LVE. Then you have Micah Parsons, of course. And you have some additional people in Harper that can, can kind of fill that void. Corner, pretty much the same. Hopefully, Kelvin Joseph gets his act together and takes the leap. Safety, I'm okay there. Now, wide receiver. Here's a situation that we might run into. 
we might, depending on how the schedule lays out, y'all, earlier on, we might get a Tampa, we might get a Green Bay, we might get a Philadelphia early out the gate, where our wide receiver core is James Washington, Jalen Tolbert, CD Lamb, and Noah Brown. Do you feel more comfortable going into the season with that wide receiver core or the one we went into with Tampa when we had CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, and Amari Cooper? So when it comes to the Cowboys this season, you cannot expect what we saw last year. This is a completely different team, completely different. So here's the thing. It's okay to say, I'm kind of concerned, right? Don't ever let fans tell you you're not a true fan if you say that you're concerned going into the season. Fun note, question my fandom if you want to. Jay Tuck's not a real Cowboys fan. I just got a phone call from the Dallas Cowboys. They've increased my tickets from last year per ticket for two, $1,500. And I got to pay it by Friday. Now, we don't know the schedule. We don't know what games I want to attend. Not Jerry Jones has cranked up the price on the Dallas Cowboys season ticket holders because of what last year's team has done. Now, can, I, I can't say that last year's team and this year's team and this year's team has a much better roster. I can't say that. I don't feel like it did. If I was at a six coming into the draft, I'm at a six right now. Right? The only silver lining that I have is Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Micah Parsons, Trayvon Diggs, and, you know, and CeeDee Lamb. Those guys, the core guys who I can trust. They run curse. I'll toss him in there. My, my guy, right? Marcus Lawrence. You know, so it's like those players I trust, those veterans. But in order for this team to really take the leap to be a championship contender, 2020's class is going to have to emerge. Also, 2021 class is going to take a leap. And these kids who we drafted last week is going to have to learn quickly. So here's what I want to tell everybody. It's okay to speak context when it comes to talking football. You guys are incredible at doing that. That's why I love talking to y'all, my CFO fam, versus the Reddits, the Facebooks, and even the Twitters, because you guys come with context. When we talk about draft, just context. I like this player, Tuck, and here's why. You're not just shooting stuff, right? And so that's why I want to kind of say, when it comes to me, it's okay to say, Philly had a great draft. How, how can I say that the Giants blew the draft when I had Evan Neal number three on my, my big board? What kind of fraud would I be? You know, come on. It doesn't even make sense. Think about it, right? But here's the thing. I feel like the Cowboys is going to have a good season. Good season, what does that necessarily mean? I do not know. We'll have to hold on tight. But like I said, my main focus is building a championship caliber team. You're seeing it around the NFL, but you're not seeing it in-house with the Dallas Cowboys. So let me know how y'all feel. Do y'all feel like we have enough right now to be a Super Bowl contender? Like you look at this roster as it's currently constructed and say, that's a championship team. We are ready to go. Or this your Cowboys fandom kind of just blind you a little bit. And you're just like, it is what it is. Tuck will line up and let the chips fall as it is. So it's your boy, Jay Tuck. Comment, like, subscribe, turn that notification bell. Follow me on all social media platforms at JTuck151. Also, the CFO store is starting to get back open. We're going to work that thing back. Man, so we got a lot of exciting stuff, a lot of exciting guests coming on this channel. We are going to continue to grow, but we will do it in a view of context, not Kool-Aid. Context over Kool-Aid. That's the new shirts coming soon. Your boy, Jay Tuck. Everyone stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay encouraged. And stop drinking all the Kool-Aid. It's bad for your blood pressure.